collaboration with Liu Liang Mao, who was a, a patriot from Shanghai, who was good friends with Ni Er, who was the composer of the Chinese National Anthem. This, this anthem was a poem uh, written by Tian Han, and like a lot of the great national anthems, it was usually a collaboration of poetry and music, and it was usually taken, um, it usually occurred at, uh, in, a, in a contemporary fashion, in real life. In other words, it wasn't something that was like a traditional poem and then somebody set music to it or, or, or music. Like, for example, the Star Spangled Banner, that was originally a British sex and drinking song, and then it was, um, that Francis Scott Key put words to this music that was made by John Stafford Smith. But um, in the Chinese National Anthem, that was uh, a, a, a collaboration between a poet and a composer, uh, which is similar to, say, Lift Every Voice and Sing, which was a collaboration between James Weldon Johnson, uh, a poet, and his brother, J. Roseman Johnson. Anyway, when I was four years old, I heard this recording, Chi Lai, and it was Paul Robeson singing the Chinese National Anthem in Mandarin. He also sang the song Chi Lai in Chinese. It had originally been a marching song for the Chinese Red Army and was now the first national anthem of the People's Republic of China, which at that moment was sweeping to power. And so the birth of this work, um, When Sorrow Turns to Joy, began when my first visit in Beijing. Uh, 1994, in August, mm -hmm. I was uh, doing research on Beijing opera for the uh, score of The Woman Warrior. And um, I found this book called uh, Peking Opera, The World According to Meilan Fong. It was uh, from a Chinese publication out of New World Press. And I discovered this photo of Mei Lan Fong and Paul Robeson in London in 1935. Um, a lot of my music has been uh, about the kinship between African American spirituals and Chinese sorrow songs, something that I've had read about that Paul Robeson referred frequently in his book, uh, Paul Robeson Speaks by Philip Fawner as well as uh, in the book Here I Stand. Um, not only in the songs, but he also mentioned like the languages in, in, in Chinese and, and uh, specifically Yoruba in, in Nigeria, that their languages are tonal. He also talked about the cultures being um, similar in a nonlinear sense. So um, what I'm going to do is show you some excerpts of this work um, when Sorrow Turns to Joy.
always played by men. But Meilan Fong was a leader in uh, changing that old Chinese feudal uh, custom and tradition of, uh, of men playing only the women roles. And so we thought, in paying tribute to Meilan Fong, that we, we selected a woman to, to portray the woman roles. Um, as I said before, this work was inspired by my experience in Beijing for three weeks uh, in, in August of 1994. I collaborated with some Beijing opera musicians. And then in September of 1994, I was invited to perform in South Africa uh, four and a half months after the elections to end apartheid. And I was performing with James Newton. And so this idea uh, was born um, looking at Africa and China. Uh, we started talking about uh, a great African thinker who was a physicist. His name was uh, Diop. I don't know, has anybody ever heard of Diop? But he, he was a uh, historian who, who uh, from his scientific <coughs> evidence that the cradle civilization, civilization belonged to uh, Egypt, and that there was actually a strong connection between Africa and China, uh, particularly during the Shang Dynasty, where uh, there was an uh, African presence in China, or the Chinese were described as uh, having black and oily skin. Um, but in um, any event, this, this work was born, and um, after 1994, J James Newton and I had traveled to China to continue our collaboration with the Beijing Opera Musicians. <coughs> and um, during that time, we were in a Chinese club, and we heard uh, Thomas Andrew Dorsey's Precious Lord Take My Hand. And the next day, we were at um, the Summer Palace. And uh, James started hearing this, this melody, this sort of uh, a gospel melody. And, and then we began composing this, this work called Searching for Freedom. 